comics are always going to be pushing at the edges of acceptability and want to provoke, want to shock. It's part of their mission. It's part of their lifeblood. And they've been often at the subject of controversy, court cases, even parliamentary legislation. You control the unfolding of the story. So you can be reading really, really swiftly and then you can stop on a panel and really inhabit that panel for a long time. Written in day, written in all by a puzzle man who questioned what we were here for. All the strangers came today and it looks as though they're here. There's no doubt that some people can't read comics. There are some people who actually are not visually literate. Comics are a complex language. They're more complex than we realise. You have to bring it to life. You have to virtually perform it. It's been equated to being like sheet music. It doesn't exist until it's actually played. The Glasgow Looking Glass could be said to be certainly the first British comic, if not the first comic. Fortnightly, published in 1825 uh, from Glasgow, it presented kind of distorted reflections on the news and topics of the day. It was a bit like a kind of a cartoon version of Have I Got News For You. It was topical and funny. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, that it's the only way of defining comics, because one could also argue that a graphic novel could predate this, that you've got William Hogarth, for example, with his Harlot's Progress. That is another form of comic. But as a periodical, this certainly set the template plate for British comics to come. A real merchandising phenomenon was Ali Sloper. He was in many ways the Spider-Man or the Batman of his day. From 1882 here you can see that he was already appearing in solo numbers. There was, he was a comic character headlining his own magazine and that in itself was a novelty at the time. The Illustrated London News Christmas special way back in 1884 and makes the point that comics certainly didn't start off being for kids. This rather disturbing little tale shows a little girl dreaming about her maltreated doll coming back and treating her in the same way, including a rather unpleasant situation where um, the doll's actually hammering nails into her head. It was a front page on the Illustrated Police News. This is from the time of the Jack the Ripper murders. It's an example of where comics cross that line. Is this lurid, exploitative and gratuitous, or is it actually much-needed reportage at a time when people were worried about what was happening and didn't have the news we have today? They don't have to feature heroes or comedy characters. They can feature ordinary people, particularly in the forms of autobiography. The artist Al Davison produced this comic, The Spiral Cage, a story that traces his struggles and triumph over having spina bifida. It's a comic form that's become known as graphic medicine. It's quite unique in that it's actually a comic version of a court case that happened in 1972 and 3, really. A comic book called Nasty Tales, which went all the way to the Old Bailey and was incredibly controversial and incredibly significant, in fact, in terms of the way obscenity is treated across all media. The speech bubble we see here is actually a quote from the judge who was haranguing a female member of staff of Nasty Tales, where he says, you're just a dirty-minded girl. It was eventually overturned, but unfortunately, the comic book was bankrupt at that point. The editions had been seized. They weren't able to recover financially. 1978, this fantastic image of Misty, who is the eponymous character who introduces each issue. Opposite is a story called Painted Black. It's that sort of quite dark, gothic material for girls and very visually innovative. Judge Dredd, I am the law, as he says. Probably one of the best known comic book characters in Britain. He's a complicated character because he's written by British writers and mostly illustrated by British artists, but he is actually American, a character that people love to hate and hate to love quite often in the same story.
politicians, of course, loathe the fact that they're going to be parodied and mocked by cartoonists, but it's been a long tradition, and the British are amongst the world's best and nastiest. Choose your own adventure, multiple choice, role-playing comic, where you can be Ronald Reagan, and the story parodies the escalating arms race and ends up with them enjoying the nuclear eve ball as the end of the world looms. Thank you.